Have you ever considered where ideas come from? Can they come from wishful thinking? Can they come from fantasies or daydreaming? Let's see how Alan and Lisa created an unusual idea for a special school project by wishing, fantasizing, and daydreaming. Alan likes math and science projects. He's used his skills to assemble complicated airplane models to build a shortwave radio set that he can talk to his friends with, and to repair his 10-speed bicycle, which really surprised his father. Last year, he entered a rocket in the school science fair, but at the last minute it didn't work because the design wasn't quite right. Lisa is just the opposite. She doesn't like math problems or working with machinery. She would rather play the piano, listen to her favorite records, or collect seashells for display in her room. She loves animals, particularly her cat, and she likes to draw flowers and birds, or interesting leaves and plants. Last year, she won second place in the school science fair with her nature exhibit. She thought that was fun. But it wasn't fun when Mrs. Baker announced the theme for this year's science fair. Science in Motion. She could never think up something scientific, especially something in motion. She was even more unhappy when she heard that students were going to work together on a project. Then she was really unhappy when she heard the teacher assign her to work with Alan, that boy who thought he knew everything. Alan was surprised when he heard Lisa's name. Work with Lisa? She didn't know up from down, and she was so dumb in math. He'd fix that. He'd get the teacher to assign him with Todd. Todd had helped him build the rocket last year. But Mrs. Baker wouldn't change her mind. She explained that if he worked with an artistic person like Lisa, his design might be better. Mrs. Baker also pointed out that the deadline for getting their project idea to her was Friday. That was only three days away. Lisa looked at Alan and Alan looked at Lisa. How could they ever get an idea by Friday? How could they ever work together? They were so different. After school, Lisa caught up with Alan on his way home. She asked him if he had any ideas for their project. Another rocket? Alan shook his head. He knew she wouldn't know about rockets, or model airplanes, or anything electronic. Lisa pointed out that the theme for the fair was science in motion. Maybe they could make something that moved, like a butterfly that flew. A butterfly? Alan wanted something mechanical, something they could build, maybe with a motor inside or with pulleys. He just knew he couldn't work with Lisa and told her so. This really bothered Lisa. If Alan was going to be so hard to work with, the whole project would be a failure. Lisa was mad. There are other things for a science project besides pulleys and gears. She could help with the design and the artwork, and he could do the mechanical part. Couldn't he at least think about it, look at some books, come up with some unusual idea? Ellen thought for a moment. Well, maybe, just maybe, they could work out something. Yeah, he'd think about it. Later that afternoon, when Alan and his father were driving up their driveway, Alan pressed the remote control button that opened the garage door. As he watched the garage door slowly open, his mind began to flash ideas of different ways he could use the remote control for the science project. He saw himself making his bicycle come to him by radio control, or have the bicycle go down the street without anyone riding it, a superbike. At home, he could open the door without anyone turning the knob. Or maybe turn on the sprinkler when no one was there. He could even make Lisa into a mechanical doll that jumped up and down when he wanted her to. Lisa. He knew she couldn't make designs for what he dreamed up. 
Lisa was having her problems, too. She sat for a long time going over and over in her mind what she could make. Something that was mechanical. Something that moved. She saw a large bird flying overhead and wondered how she could design something like it. By stringing cord through the wings and tying them to wires, the bird could be hung from the ceiling. By pulling the cords, the wings would flap like it was flying. Would Alan like that? Would it be mechanical enough to suit him? He liked electronic gadgets, radios, and walkie-talkies. What about a talking cat? They could make it with paper mache or cardboard boxes and then put a radio inside. But how would it move? How about flowers? She liked flowers. But they didn't move. Except the petals moved when they opened. Maybe they could make large petals that opened and closed, moving back and forth. Could it also be talking or singing? A singing flower. How neat. She couldn't wait to tell Alan. At recess the next morning, she had a chance to talk to Alan. She started to tell him about her idea. But he looked at her like it was the dumbest thing he'd ever heard. Lisa wouldn't give up. But a flower with moving petals, with a radio inside so it could sing. Didn't he think that was a good idea? Alan walked away. What a bird-brained idea Lisa was having. He didn't even feel like telling Lisa his ideas. She just wouldn't understand about bicycles taking off down the street by remote control. But when he thought about Lisa's talking flower, Alan realized that her idea wasn't much crazier than his superbike. Maybe they could work together after all. But they'd have to think up something really good by Friday. Friday morning came, and when Mrs. Baker asked if all the Science in Motion project ideas were in, Lisa and Alan both had to say no. They couldn't think of anything. Mrs. Baker told them that they would have to decide by the end of the day, or they wouldn't be able to enter the fair. Alan looked at Lisa, and Lisa looked at Alan, wondering what they should do. As soon as the last class was dismissed, they had a short talk. They had to have an idea, an unusual idea. Then Alan thought that maybe his favorite hobby shop would have something they could use. If they hurried, they could be back before Mrs. Baker left school. They ran to the store trying to think of something unusual, but they couldn't agree on one idea they both liked. In the hobby shop window, a small robot was on display. Lisa and Alan stopped to look at it. Alan had an idea. Could Lisa design a remote control robot, one that could sing and talk? Lisa was sure she could. Hadn't she dreamed up the singing flower? But how could their robot move? Alan told her how a robot could have long, flopping antennas on a swivel head and they could make him move by remote control. He told her how they could tape record the sounds that the robot would make, and he was sure they could make it move with wires or levers. Lisa was more interested now. Maybe they could make a small robot, one that would walk and talk. That'd be neat. Satisfied with their decision, Alan and Lisa hurried back to tell Mrs. Baker their plan. She was just leaving when they came running into the room. They had an idea. Were they on time? Mrs. Baker listened to them carefully. Did they really want to build a robot? Did they have time? Did they know what they were getting into? Alan and Lisa answered, yes, yes. Mrs. Baker could only shake her head and wonder. A robot? How did those two ever dream up that idea? <laughs>